Hello, I'm Pastor Joel Silberman. Thank you for watching Regeneration Television Broadcast. It's my hope that through this message you are encouraged and made stronger in Jesus Christ and the truth of His Word. Enjoy this message and may God richly bless you. So this morning the Lord really placed upon my heart to minister in an area that I just feel as, as a pastor is always necessary to bring forth in a message. But what happened was we were so incredibly blessed with the past. And if you haven't been here, I would highly recommend see Francia for the CDs. But we were blessed with the first book of Timothy. Pastor Carol took us probably through the majority of that whole book. Pastor Joel opened it up and uh, Pastor Carol really imparted to us great, great impartation and wonderful teaching how many were incredibly blessed with first timothy amen it was incredible and so there's nothing like really breaking open the word of god and really getting to know the word of god and so before we start and next week we are going to be going into another phase of teaching that the lord's really placing on our heart in stewardship uh with the men away it was like, okay, what do you want us to share, Lord? And the Lord really spoke to me in one particular verse in uh, Timothy. And the verse, we'll look at it, PowerPoint number one, is 1 Timothy 1.12. And this is in the NIV, and it says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength, that he's considered me trustworthy, appointing me to service. And so the title of my message this morning is really, if you want to lead others, you got to start by serving others. I want to look at it in the Amplified. Let's just look in the Amplified. It says, I give thanks to him who's granted me the needed, see, the Lord knows, the needed strength and made me able for this. Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me and counted me faithful and trustworthy, appointing me to his stewardship of the ministry. See, that's an attribute and that's a characteristic of a true servant, one that is faithful and one that's trustworthy. And I want you to just today ask the Lord, there's always something you may say, you know, I've been serving in God's kingdom, and you know what? The Lord blesses you, and he sees that. But we always need a fresh encouraging and challenging word about serving in the kingdom of God. And so we are counted as faithful when it comes to serving. And we're counted as trustworthy when it comes to serving. Stewardship of ministry, that's what it is. Are we a true steward of God's ministry? And that is a variety of things, endless Paul knew that serving in God's kingdom was what gave him favor. See, when we serve the Lord, there's favor upon us. And it gave him favor to reach people. It gave him favor to reach everybody around him. He knew he wanted to be like Christ. And he was able to, and he, like Christ, and he had to act like him. Jesus was the greatest servant of all. Obviously, we know that. So he's really our example. You know, when I'm sure when Megan went to India and she was laboring with those people and doing what she was doing, there was favor, not because she got up and gave a big fancy talk, but because she got with them and went into that orphanage and served those little ones. That gave her favor for them to hear from her. Amen? It gives us favor here in this church when we serve. So if you want to reach people and touch them, their lives, serving in God's kingdom is going to do it. I'd like to read you one of the most, I think, a really radical verse. And this is in the Lydon translation. And if you look at PowerPoint 3, Matthew 20, 26 to 28, it says, But among you, it is quite different. Anyone wanting to be a leader among you must be your servant. Your attitude must be like my own. For I, the Messiah, did not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. 
So, if I'm going to follow anybody's example, it's going to be the Lord. Amen? And so his example was one that served. And we're going to go into that a little bit more. So what does it mean? And really, why should I serve others? I want to give you seven motivations. We need to be motivated sometimes. Amen? And we need to have purpose and understanding of why we do what we do. We need to be encouraged, and we need to have that vision. But we need to, more than anything, be willing. And so when we're willing, God can motivate our hearts. And so I want to give you seven motivations. We all like to serve God, but we don't always like to serve others. <laughs> it's true. You know, I'll watch people all the time, and they're like, Hallelujah. I'm such a wonderful Christian that praises the Lord. And we'll say, do you think that maybe you could pick up that paper over there? I'm in prayer right now. And that's more spiritual. Sometimes we get like that. And God says, I'm watching the one that's praying. And I'm watching the one that's picking that up. And they're all the same to me. So... We want to serve others, amen? So if we say, hey, there goes, and I, I put Alice because she's just such a servant, you know. Alice, there goes that Alice, servant of God. That's a pretty great title. That's a title that Paul used, Mary used, and Peter used. And who else? Jesus. He said, I am a servant of God. But we don't like to be the servant of others. And Jesus said the way you are a servant of God is to be a servant of others. So I'm driving home this point here. So in the seven motivations, God's more interested in, I just want to say this, why you do what you do, then he's interested in what you do. See, he's going to check, we want to check out our hearts today. So let's check out our hearts. And we're going to look at PowerPoint 4. And this is where it starts of why should I serve? Now, this is not exhaustive. Just as things that I come up with, there's a list, I'm sure, that is, trust me, not exhaustive. But these are, I believe, ones that we can look at. And the first is because God created us to serve. See, when you know that it really is the Lord who's designed us. We don't take as much credit. And when you know it's the Lord that designs us, it actually also motivates you that it's in you to do it. You get it? So Ephesians 2.10 says, It is God himself. We're getting that straight. It's God himself who has made us what we are. Thank the Lord. And has given us new lives from Christ Jesus. And long ago, he planned that we should spend these lives in helping others. So I would circle that long ago because that's what it's all about. Long ago, that was his plan. That's how he did it. The Bible says that even before you were born, God planned a life of service for you. No, it wasn't sitting and drinking those... What is it they say? Pina coladas on an island. <laughs> it was a plan of service for you. A service for you. The reason why so many people feel empty, and I want to just say this, this is very important, because a lot of us at times feel this way. They feel empty it because we've missed the point of life. God planned that we should have a heart of a servant. As I serve my needs, okay, my own needs are met. See, if I'm serving, I'm getting ministered to. So as you serve, your needs are met. And as I give my life away, according to Scripture, you're going to find it. See, a life, without a life of putting Christ first, then we have our own agenda. And so he needs to be first in everything. And when the minute we arise in the day, if our heart is good morning, Lord, and our heart is thankful that we're breathing and getting out of bed and being able to do what we do, 
that a life that's putting him first immediately in our mindset as soon as we open our eyes we're giving him praise we're knowing it's him that's given us life and breath and in that when he becomes our all in all he also becomes the only agenda now god knows you're going to get up and take a shower or brush your teeth and have breakfast he knows that you may be home taking care of kitties or he knows that you're home taking care of kitties and going to work or home not taking care of kitties and going to work whatever it is he knows that you have things that you're going to function in but in all that god's agenda is going to be in your heart to say lord how do you want to use me in my workplace how do you want to use me in my church how do you want to use me on the mission field how do you want to use me so a life of service is one that desires god's heart and god's agenda so why do we serve because god's created us so we have to know and get that in our mindset it's because he's created us to do so long ago he planned that two let's look at powerpoint number five why do we serve well it proves that we belong to christ a lot of times people will pick up your greatest witness may not always be and I'm strong in that area I'm always always speaking about Christ but I'll tell you many a times it will be your life of service that will people will know that you belong to the Lord something's different about this person just something's different so your life of service will show you belong to the Lord Romans 7 4 and this is in the good news translation you are a part of the body of Christ and now you belong to him who raised who was raised from the dead in order that we might be useful in the service of God so basically it's saying our life and not our own or is it see so we are going to serve in any capacity it's going to prove that we belong to him but the thing is is sometimes we haven't given all of ourselves to him and we're still holding back some and because of that we're reluctant to be used in any capacity to serve in God's kingdom God says the way you know the part of the body of Christ is that you serve others there's no such thing and I'm going to say this there's no such thing as saying I'm a Christian but I'm not serving see you were created to serve and you're a part of, you belong to Christ. So those two things already are saying. Now, if you've opened your heart, and there may be somebody here that hasn't, but if you, ha and, and I would pray today that you would hear these words, but a Christian is one that has said, I'm a sinner. I recognize that I sinned. I recognize that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And I want him to come into my heart forgive me of my sins and become my Lord and my Savior I give my life to him this day and from this day forward I want to follow him now when you say that prayer you're saying that you want a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord says that if you believe on him you will be saved and we need salvation we need to, to truly truly make him Lord and in that many of us say that prayer and are saved and we follow God and we love the Lord but many serve on their own conditions and so your Christianity and the growth and your spiritual walk will show in how far you are in God and how mature you are in God and how deep your roots are in God in your service and we're not talking about works mentality. We're saved by grace, the word of God said, lest anyone would boast. We're talking about once you have received the Lord, you begin to bear fruit and grow. Now, that wonderful transformation and conversion of salvation begins to show in your acts of service. Okay, we're not doing that to win brownie points. And we're certainly not doing that to earn our way into the kingdom. We're doing it to glorify God in our lives and to touch others for eternity. Amen? Amen. 
there's a place for everyone. So if you're not serving, if you're a Christian and you say, I'm, not an, uh, I'm a Christian, I'm not serving, something's wrong here. So if you are part of the body of regeneration, where are you serving? There's a place to serve for everyone here. For everyone, there is a place to serve. Now let's look at number three, PowerPoint six. Serving others is a way to serve God. So again, on to the Lord. You're doing it on to the Lord. You're touching another life because you're doing it on to the Lord. And this is very, very important attitude that we have. Colossians 3, 23 and 24, as you see on the PowerPoint, says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord you are serving. Very, very important that you do this. Now I gave you another one and then I want to make a comment to you. Matthew 25, 40, the king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you have di did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. So, is this helping the perspective? Whether you're at work, in the workplace, even in the workplace, your ultimate, even though you have a boss, one that you are serving is the Lord in the workplace. In your home, if you are with family and you're ministering to your family, it is on to the Lord. In the nation, when you're in the mission field, it's on to the Lord and in the body of Christ. And sometimes we neglect the home base. We want to do everywhere else, but we forget our own home base. And so a lot of times when we serve, what happens is, is we may serve with the wrong motive. And we may feel that we didn't get enough appreciation and we didn't get enough affirmation and nobody noticed and nobody cared. And Pastor Carol help you with the temperament that some of the temperaments need a little more affirming. <laughs> but the point is this. If you really know what you did was on to the Lord, would you really care? Let me just say this. I'll speak for Pastor Carol, too. If we did everything looking for appreciation, we would never be pastors. <laughs> you do things because God's called you to. And you do it with a heart that's blessed and honestly privileged. And with humility, we have to serve people, not lord over them. And it is an honor and a privilege to do that. And yes, of course, there are times where when you're back and forth in any type of engaging with people because of all of our character flaws, not always easy. But God uses even that to get after things in us. He'll use your life of service to get at things to break you, to strip you, and to mature you. And certainly not for you to give up, and certainly not for you to throw in the towel. And we've walked through some quite challenging things over the years in ministry. And um, I didn't have this in my notes, but I'll share this. I remember when we went to, and Pastor Carol remembers this, we went to see a wonderful, wonderful prophet. And after he would say all these heavy-duty prophetic things, he kind of read your mail and knew everything you went through and all your pain and ministry, and then he also spoke words of life and destiny, he would kind of pat you on the back when he was done and go, welcome to ministry. And every person he said that over, and it was basically, it was mostly pastors and leaders. But that is true. Welcome to ministry. It's going to be times that it's not always, um, it does seem like a thankless job. Though I will say, as pastors, we are not the Lord, but I will say this, when people are serving, there is only but gratitude when you see people serve. It is a blessing. So 
You're serving on to the Lord. We need to get that real straight because that's going to help you in anything you do when you know the motive is to honor him and to serve him. Amen. Now, I want you to look at number four. And uh, I mean, uh, yes, number four and PowerPoint seven, which we got up here. It's be also, why do we serve? Because I owe everything to God. And I have this attitude. I mean, you know, writing this, I have to tell you, I start to cry because there is such a gratitude in my heart towards the Lord. And I'm sure you could agree you have that same feeling. And if in any way you're in a dry place, I would hope today that this is going to help you to come out of that dry place because we owe everything to God. And Romans 12, 1 says, because God's great mercy to us, I appeal to you. Offer yourselves as living sacrifice to the Lord, dedicated to his service and pleasing to him. This is true worship that you should offer. See, our lives ought to be a living sacrifice. Or are we selfish and unwilling? Sometimes we are. Are we lazy? Or are we caught up in the world? And our own needs? Or, you know, it's just not a priority. You know, blow into church and blow out of church. You know, not concerned. Or even around us, the different wonderful opportunities we have, even in our own neighborhood, to serve, to make a meal, to go to a, a, a homeless shelter, to go to a soup kitchen. Or it's, you know, got my, uh, came in, came out, off to the next thing. We're to be living sacrifices. And yes, the word sacrifice does not mean that it's always easy. That's why it's called a sacrifice. Because you're sacrificing something. Maybe your time. Maybe your money. Serving is giving. When you go into your pocket and give, you are serving the Lord. The reason why I serve the Lord, and I'm going to share with you, I'm going to say one of the things is because of what the Lord has done for me. Because of his mercy. See, none of us deserve it. When I think of what Jesus has done for me, the sacrifice he's made for me, there's no sacrifice I can make for him that will ever compare to what he's done for me. Even if I never ever got an award for the service, and though the word, word speaks about in heaven there are rewards, <clears throat> for that service that I do for the Lord, I owe him my service. See, that's an attitude we have to have. That it's what he's done for us changes a whole perspective because we really owe him everything. Trust me, you're not doing him a favor when you do something. You're blessing and honoring him. So the fact that he saved me and he made me his and I am going to heaven when I die, and that he forgave my sins, so will I give my life. We owe everything to God, and that's why we're to serve him. How many have that attitude? He saved you? You're going to heaven? And he forgave your sins. So you want to give your life away? See, we owe everything to him. Let's look at PowerPoint 8, and this is another reason why we serve, because it's the best use of my life. Well, just let me know if you're bored. Come and meet with Pastor Carol and I, because we will make sure you will never be bored again. <laughs> it is the best use of your life, and I'm going to tell you, I can stand here, and I bet you most of you, and maybe all of you, could come up here and share the joy that you have had in serving and touching a life. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Good news. Sometimes the good news is a great version. 
So then, my dear friends, stand firm and steady. Keep busy, always in your work for the Lord, since you know that nothing you do in the Lord's service is ever useless. See, there's no job too small, no service that goes unnoticed by God. Now, I want to say something. There were three tremendous prophetic words today. Everyone was just incredible. And Kristen, my precious niece, I was so blessed, she shared a word about this being still before God. We are always to be able to sit before the Lord. That is a service unto the Lord. And we're ministering unto the Lord. And then we heard Kathleen bring forth about the destiny and the purpose and how he's bringing us forward and what God's about to do there. And now that kind of comes inside with what I'm sharing here. And then we had our precious Karen bring forth the word. So each word, if you listen to these prophetic words, there are things that God is saying simultaneously that he's doing at the same time. And so God is, yes, just as concerned with us sitting and waiting before him, but then he says, get up and go and work out that love and bring it to path by bearing great fruit. Great fruit. And so no job is too small, no service goes unnoticed. Now, if you're in children's ministry and you change a diaper, it's not without value. <laughs> if you pick up a piece of trash on a Sunday morning, it's not without value. See, are you a guest here? Or is this your home? The guests visit, but home homeowners, they take ownership of their home. Now you may be coming here for a year and you've just still been a guest. But I will tell you, when you take ownership of your home, that's when you really connect. You connect with the body, you care, whether we're going to be taking these curtains down and getting blind soon. We care about what goes on. If you walk into the restroom and you see paper spread out all over the floor, do you pick it up and say, if a visitor comes in here, I want the bathroom to look presentable. Or do you just do your thing and walk out and say, I'm just off. Or do you look down and say, oh, looks like there's a paper on the floor. Let me pick that up right now. This is my house of worship. This is where I come. This is my other home. Nothing we do is without value to the Lord. It's not so much what you do. It's your heart and how you do it. What's my attitude? There's no significant, insignificant service in God's eyes. None. See, whether you're on the worship team, you're greeting, you're ushering, children's church, the soundboard, hospitality, tender-hearted, home group leader, all the same to God. When we minister, you're making an impact for eternity. When we do things throughout the week, or in the week, it may or may not count five years from now, much less eternity. But as the old saying goes, only one life will soon be passed, only what's done for Christ will last. Amen? So we do things because it's the best use of my life. Now, I want to tell you that in the beginning of the year, we um, had a um, wonderful beginning in sharing about vision. And one of the things I shared about is a little bit about the life of the church. And I want to take about two minutes before I finish up and share about the life of the church because we have wonderful things that go on in Regeneration Church. And we need to rejoice about that. And God is doing great things, great things in this church because he loves us. Not because we're great, because he's great. And he loves us. But the one thing we do do is we look to him. And he honors that. And there are possible open doors that are going to be happening 
here at Regeneration Church, and we're going to share further about what God's going to be doing there. But great thing. But one of the things is that we have many ministries that go on. And what happens just on a Sunday morning, today, Sunday morning, okay, is we come in and we have morning prayer. So we're here at 9 o'clock and we are serving the Lord by praying for others. And then in another room, we have Celebrate Recovery. And Pastor Joel couldn't be here, and so Madeline said, I'll fill in. And that was a service unto the Lord. And so Celebrate Recovery was in there. And then we have Foundations. And we have Foundations for 12 weeks, and then we wait a few weeks, and we start it all over again. And so that's going on in there, and we have people that teach Foundations, like Gray and Karen, sometimes Roland and Pam. So things are going on at 9 o'clock. And then when the worship team comes and they're practicing up there, what's going on? But they're getting ready and preparing to usher us in to the presence of God on a Sunday morning. So what is all that? It's called service unto the Lord. So now when Darlene walks in with all the little kids and Kristen does, we have Jackie Jackson's little girls come upstairs and watch them at 9 o'clock so that they could do worship. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is the life of church. And now while they're doing worship up there, what's going on back there? But you got Margaret on the camera or on the soundboard or Joseph and you got Mary Ellen and others and Chris Ahern or whatever, whoever doing PowerPoints. That's a life of service. And so what about when we have family day? We're staying after. Who bought all those bagels? Well, my honey did. <laughs> and who sets them up? But we have a hospitality team. And then when we're doing communion, who's setting that up? My honey. And then we have pastors like Pastor Joel and Pastor Carol and myself in a time of my son preparing a message that's service. We're serving the Lord on a Sunday morning. And then, wait a minute, we had ushers and we had greeters and then we collected the money and then we had to count the money. All that's going on just on a Sunday morning. It's called serving the Lord. That's right. And so then we have new people come and we want to follow up on them and we want them to fill out those visitor cards. So we have people that are starting to make sure that those new people know they're welcome. We all should be doing that, but we want to make sure nobody falls between the crack. That's a service. And then we have a dance ministry sometimes that comes forward. That's a service and flags. The point I'm making is much happens on a Sunday. And you can join in in that service. We go through foundations, make ourselves accountable, come under right covering, and we serve. And throughout the week, Monday night, we're here at Tenderhearted. What are we doing? Pastor Carol, Pastor Joel is bringing forth the word. We have a women's group, a men's group, a hospitality. It's service onto the Lord. We got the CDs going on Sunday and the DVDs going. Monday I just shared, and Tuesday we have a, a women's group going on. We have a men's group going on. What are they doing? These leaders and assistant leaders are serving the men. There's a pastoral heart in them, and there's an evangelistic heart in them that's saying, we want to reach others. We want to see these things grow. But some of us are not serving, and some of us don't even go to a home group. We blow in and we blow out because we're still acting like we're guests and not taking ownership of our own home, regeneration. And so Wednesday comes around and the worship team is gathering and practicing and serving. And Friday, Thursday comes around and we got a mom's group going on every other Thursday at Panera Bread. And then we have a young adults group every other Friday at PLs. <laughs> Little crowd over there. <laughs> and then we have a Holy Spirit night Who's serving there? But we're going to come. And then we have a prophetic intercession on Sunday after church that we're teaching on prophetic evangelism. The list goes on. The list goes on. So intercessors, they intercede. What a service onto the Lord. And then we go out into the highway and the byways and we serve. Where's your place? Children's church is one of the most wanted, needed, most important ministries on a Sunday. And 
We have women and men that teach our little ones. We have the nursery, we have the toddler room, we have the six to eight, and the nine to, t and the, uh, nine to 12. But I will tell you that probably one of the most needed areas, and many, many people do it, and they pour into these little ones, and they love it, and many just are afraid to get their feet wet. But I will tell you, when you give to those little ones, your life's never the same. Because you're ch touching someone for eternity. Many a times on a Sunday we have children's church workers, but we don't have nursery workers. Because why? People get burnt out because it's the same people that do it over and over and over again. And they need a break. And so I challenge you today to ask the Lord, where are you to serve? Not only in your neighborhood, in your workplace, and with your family, but in the church that feeds you regularly. What could you give back to God? Let's look at number six, PowerPoint nine. Because it makes my life meaningful. So why do I serve? It makes your life meaningful. Mark 8.35, if you insist on saving your life, you'll lose it. Only those who throw away their lives for my sake and for the sake of the good news will ever know what it means to really live. You want to really live? If you're not following God, you're not living, you're just existing. And if you're not serving, you're not living, you're just existing. If you really want to live, you need to start serving. And look at, let's look at the last one, PowerPoint 10. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, PowerPoint, uh, yeah, 10, number seven. It will be rewarded eternity. Well, let me tell you, that is a great motivation. <laughs> John 12, 26 says, whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servant will also be. My father will honor the one who serves me. So, what did we just hear? God's going to honor those who serve him. A promise and a reward. A promise and a reward. Matthew, 12, 20, Matthew 25, 21. His master replied, and we want to hear these words, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in the few. I will put you in charge of many. Come and share your master's happiness. Amen. Why don't we just play as I close in prayer. See, this life is a test. I've walked through many, many things in my life already. And I've always said, Lord, you're going to use it to prove yourself to me to break me, to mature me, to draw closer. It's a test. And you know what? I'm going to say this. This is just probation down here. You're on probation. We're here just being tested. And God's seeing what kind of faithfulness we have. Yeah, our faithfulness is being tested. Are we going to spend, and we are going to spend far more time on the other side of eternity than we do years we have here. You ever think about that? A lot more on that side. How we spend our time here, here, is going to determine what's going to be done with us for the next, for us in the next life for eternity. Jesus said, and I want you to hear this, you've been faithful in the little things I will put you in charge of many. Come and share your master's happiness. What words? Let's just stand. That is the greatest motivation in life. I shared with you seven motivations for being a servant. And at another time, I do have a part two to this. And the part two is nine characteristics 
on what it takes to be a servant leader. So motivations to be a servant and what will it take to be that servant leader. Let's look at that last PowerPoint. PowerPoint 11. Seven motivations. Why should I serve others? Because God created us for service. It proves that we belong to Christ. Serving others is the way to serve God. Because I owe God everything. Because it's the best use of my life. Because it makes life meaningful. And it will be rewarded eternity. The most of everything that we want to hear is well good. Well done, thy good and faithful service. See, it's going to be worth it because that's where we're going to spend eternity. Amen. Enjoy today's message. If you would like to hear more, we encourage you to visit our website. Also, if you're ever in the area, stop by. We would love to have you at Regeneration Church at Sunday service. Again, thank you for watching, and may God richly bless you.